Welcome back to Adobe Live. Today we are here with character designer Jonah Loeb. Woo! While well, we're talking character design, I don't know what would you actually brand yourself as, Jonah. <laughs> I, I think character designer for the for the moment is is good. We can also go with, with uh, concept artist. Excellent. Yes, yeah. concept artist, character design. Uh, hello, everyone in the chat. Saying hi to uh, Martha and Marsha. Oh my gosh, friends, right? Uh, Cody Bear, of course. We've got Sam Peterson. We've got Shell. We've got so many people from all around the world popping into the chat. Love to see you. Hey, Lindsay, how you doing? Uh, good Tuesday morning to you. I hope you guys are having a great day. And if you didn't catch it yesterday, we were here uh, as well yesterday on Monday. <gasps> and you can watch the replay of that here here on Behance Live and, or <laughs> Behance Live, here on Behance. Uh, by the way, Jonah, you're getting compliments on your shirt already. I think we coordinated for like patterns. So. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Oh my God, <laughs> yes. Thank you. I, I, I took this from a friend at a clothing swap. I don't have like any kind of sense of, of style, but he does. And <laughs> so, so every time- stole it. <laughs> yeah, every time he like comes in, he's like, hey, do you want some shirts? I'm like a vulture. I'm like, yes. I and love it. Yes, it's how you get the best clothes. Yeah, just take somebody else's. <laughs> All right, so today we've got a lot of stuff coming up and also a lot of stuff behind us. So we had uh, getting started with Spencer and then we had the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge right before this with Paul Tranny. Thank you, Paul. It was amazing. I saw some green screen action happening. Uh, and then of course we're here with Jonah Loeb for character design. And then after us is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. If you've ever wanted to learn something about Illustrator, jump right in there. After that is video editing and then the XD, the XD Daily Creative Challenge. That's a mouthful. And to end the day, we have Doodle Therapy with Alice and Sid. So exciting. <laughs> whoop, whoop. All right, so uh, if you guys didn't see yesterday, we were working on a piece with Quiet, which is your original character, Jonah. Um, can you tell if somebody is like just joining in a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what we did yesterday? Uh, my pleasure, absolutely. Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jonah Loeb. I am a game artist, an illustrator, a fantasy art educator, and I guess a concept artist. Um, and I've, I, has spent most of my career in uh, video games, uh, making 3D models for games, uh, characters, dragons, super mutants for games like Fallout, Skyrim, that kind of thing. Um, and since uh, since I left there, I've been doing a lot of freelance work. I do a lot of uh, work for different game design companies. I do uh, concept art as well, uh, which is basically the uh, art of coming up with ideas for games, for movies, for presentations, etc. Um, not presentations. I don't know why I said that word. I just thought I needed a third stuff, thing you know? in the list. Um, <laughs> Gotta have it. And, <laughs> and uh, so I do that. I do illustration and I do fantasy art um, education. So my focus is on fantasy art. Um, and that both includes kind of the art art part of it, which is kind of just color, light, shape, form, line, those rudiments of art. Uh, I'm very passionate about that. And I'd like to teach those things. I also like the fantasy element, uh, which to me comes down to world building and storytelling. And so combining uh, uh, visuals and story in interesting ways is kind of something I'm really interested in. And um, in recent years have started kind of venturing into illustration because of this. So, I and that's kind say, of where- like you're in the right place. <laughs> for uh, yeah, right? I feel very at home right here, right now with all of you. Um, yeah. and. It, to, to answer you the second part of your question, what am I doing right now? I'm working on um, a little uh, 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 character called Quiet. And um, this is him. I don't know if I, I can't quite see if I'm being seen right now, if it's being shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You can. We can all see it. Excellent, excellent. Um, uh, this is a little character. He's a little skeleton character. Hmm. Um, and he has kind of a, a bit of a backstory uh, that I've been developing uh, by hand in the traditional art in this series of, um, that's upside down. 
<laughs> from yesterday, life. if you guys remember. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, I'll say that again at the end uh, right, <laughs> right now. But this is some basically some traditional art that's scanned in uh, that tell the story of this character's um, adventures. And this is the first panel. This is where we meet him. Um, you can you can see some of these storytelling little bits on my Instagram. And when the, when all these 12 chapters are done, it'll be bundled together and put on my YouTube um, into a full length, uh, full length, like a 10 minute long little story. And my hope is to have um, more things happen to this little character. And I, I hope to continue to tell tales um, of his uh, little adventures. But essentially, um, that's kind of where we are today. And I, while I normally pursue this project in a traditional medium, i.e. pen and ink. Today I'm doing it uh, digitally here with Anna and we're kind of putting together a list little scene of quiet versus what appear to be um, hydras. Uh, Clearly so this is going to be the cover of the book that you publish where it's just, you know, I could see a little text going in there being like quiet by Jonah Loeb. Boom. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> enter for adventure and yes yeah. <laughs> enter for adventure i love it uh by the way somebody in the chat let's see uh it was samuel santos hey we remember you from yesterday uh <laughs> is asking the exact same question that i had for you before the stream i was telling jonah i was like i have to hold the questions in because i have some <laughs> but I'm gonna save them for the stream so you guys get the answers too. So the question is, have you ever told the origin of the character's name? So how did you come across Quiet? That's a great question, really good question. I remember you had a really good question yesterday uh, as well. So <laughs> well done, Samuel. Oh, Samuel, right? Yeah, Samuel, yes, yes. We both have Samuel, the same question. You're so nailing it. Um, <laughs> uh, good question. I, you know, in when it comes to fantasy and fantasy writing, I think oftentimes we go for words like, you know, Asterian or like, Lewa will or whatever kind of like elvish kind of fun <laughs> fantasy world thing but Lewa i will. knew that with the ad the kind of going into this particular project i knew that what i was going for was a storyteller vibe where i as you're watching these come together and as you're reading them i want you to feel as if you are um totally um kind of being read to having a story read to you and i wanted to feel cozy and so to that end, uh, I'm a lot less focused on the world building and, you know, the this castle was built by this and this and that and whatever. It's much more a fun little um, a little myth. And so I wanted a character with a name that was instantly recognizable um, mm -hmm. and that told us something about him. And in this case, you know, I had, I had designed him before um, and sketched these little drawings of him. And I realized that he never, I never drew him with a lower jaw um, and, Part of that was because I wanted him to always have this kind of round, you know, cute noggin. Yeah. Um, because I just, I, I was saying to Annie yesterday, I just had a, a daughter, a daughter a year and a half ago. And so this little bumbly little body shape is kind of like more in my mind. And so I wanted to kind of, and, and, uh, to ha maintain the integrity of that sphere. And I didn't want to add the lower jaw because that makes him look like he's smiling or frowning or whatever. Um, and so I felt like, he doesn't have a lower jaw. Does that mean he can't speak in his world? Like, and, and could I possibly get away with having him not actually say any words over the course of this um, thing and just kind of just, yeah. you know, just just by action alone, you know, um, be able to to um, engage in his adventures, etc. Right. Now I've since had it so made it so that he can speak a little bit. But a little, um, bit, a little tiny baby lower just jaw. A, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Every once in a while, he says a couple words. Um, but I just wanted somebody who um, had this small little humble origin and yet to make that kind of into this kind of like um, epic thing. There's a nice dichotomy there between like, you know, him, little him, and then just quiet because I kind of felt like right. there was something kind of, um, you know, very small about the character, but very big about his story. For sure. um, and so that's kind of where that came from. Great question. Love it. Love the answer. Great answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Robzilla is saying that this should be a video game, by the way. Uh, and also Cartier, Cartier, uh, possibly, says, does he have a sister called Hush? That's pretty cute. That's really cute. <laughs> well, listen, I, I am copywriting that right now. That's a great idea. You can't <laughs> okay. use it. I'm, just I'm like just the shirt, it. just taking it. I, I, I said it first, hush, that's the spinoff. Um, no, it. he does not. But I will tell you this, he does have a friend who he loses 
whose name is Civil. Wait, what was it? Civil. Civil. Oh, yeah. So, civil. so, so there's quiet and there's civil, and we lose civil, as you can see. Um, Spoilers, guys. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't like gone through necessarily and like kind of been like, well, what does that mean for little skeleton society, and why do they have these names, and does that mean there's a noble, and that means there's this and that, and I don't know, mm -hmm. but that's the fun about a story tale, uh, a fairy tale is you don't have to think too deeply about it, which is very refreshing <laughs> for me because I. I think so like deeply in, in this granular fashion about fantasy that I'm like, well, what does that imply about their their food? Do they use spices in their food? Where do they get their spices from? And it's like, calm down, Jonah. Calm exactly. Down. Well, do they eat is a pretty valid question, but I totally understand where it's like, <laughs> is it important to the story I'm telling? No, not at all. Yeah. But um, I guess you, I, I'm betting that that came across because of the cinnamon trees, probably. Yes, the, <laughs> I still wanted them to indulge in like the senses Mm. Um, and so in this story, um, in chapter one, he goes off looking for cinnamon, um, little curls of cinnamon bark to give to his mother who makes a really, really delicious um, drink called Sinalina. Yeah. And so I can't, you know, because I didn't we want him to like that. come from the land of the dead. You know, I still want him to be like a, a person. But then for instance, later on, he meets the spider and the spider actually doesn't have any interest in him, even though she's a giant spider because he has no blood. He's bloodless. And so oh they, they can be. You're useless to me. Yeah, he's basically, he's basically like, basically, he, he, he comes to her for help, and she's basically like, I mean, what do you have to offer? Because you don't have any blood, you know, like, what are you going to give me? Um, and so then he goes I on really a quest. Like juicy things. Her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that's so that's amazing. where we're at. And then wow. this, so so this panel here that we're doing today is kind of just, we're just inventing it. We're just going to have fun and. I don't know where this falls in the story. I just know that I wanted to see a bunch of Hydra heads go after our main character. Absolutely, which I love this idea. And I hope that you guys are taking that away as well as you, if you in the chat feel like you are a storyteller, but you're not quite sure about every facet of the story, just start with something. <laughs> like mm -hmm. if there's a cool image in your head, there's no reason not to draw it. You don't have to work it into the story immediately and you never know how it'll fall into place. So Absolutely. love that. <laughs> that's that's a really that's a good point i feel like um i think one of the most important things about being creative and being a creator and world builder is kind of just writing things down and putting putting them down on paper and i think that yeah um because a that get that makes the idea more real and sure. b it can also um you can then kind of like free your short-term memory or long-term memory from having to hold that all the time and you can move on to other ideas and it kind of just begins a process of getting those ideas out on paper and Absolutely. I write down, I have a, in my little notepad app on my phone, I write down ideas all the time. And <laughs> the chaotic notepad app. <laughs> extremely oh. chaotic, but like still somehow the one I use, it's confusing. I don't know. Oh yeah. It's just, I know the feeling of like notes of everything. They don't really make sense after the fact, but you know, maybe something catches there. Yes, exactly. Oftentimes I'll write down an idea that I like love. And then a day later I'm like, ah, it doesn't really fit. Mm -hmm. Totally. But, yeah. Um, by the way, Cody is saying, I love the word noggin, lol. <laughs> that was your word. Good job. Uh, and Howard is saying he's quickly reserving quietandhush.com. Uh, oh, so that's gone already. I, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Can't say things on the live stream. Uh, no, no, Spencer. Yeah, I, I have to stop threatening little litigation to my streamers. <laughs> he keeps getting no, in the way. Keep threatening harder. <laughs> Spencer says, I enjoy telling myself stories about who is in my illustrations. I love that. And also he asks, are you using art markers for these? For the traditional ones? Yeah, yes. I am using um, Copic markers. Um, so ah. I use, if you, if you look up close here, to the kind of like the the marker marker work, um, this is kind of a lower res scan uh, or a lower res version. But so you can see that I'm using, um, you know, classic pens. I use um, Pigma yeah. pens and uh, Tombow pens. And then when it comes to using the markers, I have um, ten different grayscale markers. Um, that is I that a of... specific number where you're like, I limit myself to ten. I try to keep it well. They, they, this is a neutral gray, and they had neutral gray, neutral gray, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one hundred. Um, and so I kind of was just like, I, for a while, I had like four of them, and then I got like six of them, and then I was like, you know what, just go all the way, buddy. Um, <laughs> so that's what I did. So Get it's, it all. Been, it's been useful. It's funny because now that I've been using markers for a while, I kind of 
think it'd be really fun to do like grayscale watercolor. <laughs> For um, sure. There's something, I spend so much time trying to blend markers together in interesting kind of watercolory ways. And, but the well, watercolors themselves are kind of um, intimidating to me. Have you used, uh, a lot of your work looks like watercolor, but I know you work mostly oh, digitally. Is that you. correct? Uh, I love watercolor. I've recently got into it. Um, I would recommend getting cheap supplies and just playing <laughs> personally, because yes. that's what helps me get into it because I can't deal with having like um, really fancy stuff that I feel like I'm wasting if I do, don't do a good job. And that is a pressure nobody needs. Like to think that you're wasting anything is really, really going to hold you back. So you have to just be like, well, it's garbage anyway, <laughs> so That's true. it doesn't matter what I make. Uh, and then true. slowly get better material so that it does what you want it to do and all that. But I think you should try it. It'd be so fun. And I, think I, I will. I, I think, I think will. that, I yeah. Have to. <laughs> have yeah. to. Yes, it's yeah. pressure. <laughs> well, I just feel like, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm holding myself back. You know, I'm not like, it, like I could do such beautiful things, but I'm, for some reason, I'm like, no, just focus on what you know. Don't. Right. Don't get excited about something new, you know? Don't experiment. Don't, don't do experiment. the things that we tell don't. everybody else to do. <laughs> Shh, don't grow. Don't grow. You're fine the way you are. Yeah. Exactly. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It's yourself. You know, you teach. So, you know, every time you tell somebody else a thing, it's like, I should take my own advice. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta <Yeah>. do it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I will. I'll do it. I'll do it. By the end of by the by, by the middle of next year, I pledge to you, the Adobe audience, that I will get watercolor. Mark it down. I'll do it. Yes. Do you Love to um, hear it. Are, do you work that into your like like work at all, Anna? Like, do you like do you sell things, or is it more for you, or? In a way, uh, I have a Patreon and basically my highest tier people get whatever the heck I make. <laughs> so uh, that can be most of the time it's postcards because that's how I usually print my work. Um, but the other side of it is sometimes I make traditional stuff. I make like clay pins. And uh, this last round that I sent out for November was actually watercolors and pins together. And it was so much fun just to, mm. I mean, I had like, I, I tore up pieces of big watercolor paper into just these like tiny four by six, maybe pieces of paper, probably smaller in some of them. And just had fun like went to town a lot of times I'm most comfortable planting like botanicals and things like that so it is like starting from a place of comfort slowly diverting if you don't like what you make just start another one that kind of thing um so if you're doing this I'm I'm imagining there are some quiet pieces that you've been like eh, didn't work out start again is that true yeah yeah the first two I ever did um they were very high de very high detail kind of like a lot of like mm. stuff going on and then I kind of was like, I can't sustain that. And also I don't like it because it's too much. It was too similar to my normal work, which is like high detail and all that. And right. I actually wanted something that felt lighter, you know, that felt more lightweight. And so I kind of did, you know, th there's a lot of detail in this. Right. But there's but a it's... lot of areas of not detail, you know? Right. And, and you know, in a, in a scene like this, I like doing the kind of detail work on the log and all that, but the background is just a line, you know, and that's kind of what I'm going for. Cause I think I need, it's, it's both um, a thing, you know, I need something that I can reproduce frequently. I can make a lot of different pieces of art for this character. Mm -hmm. And also um, I need to, as an artist, I really need to focus on uh, the simplicity, the, like the kind of the underlying simpleness of a piece of art as being its strength. Um, because I've always practiced I've always preached rather, um, you know, simplicity in design, but so many of my designs throughout my career um, are, you know, hyper detailed. So I'll just take you over to my art station here. Yeah, for a second definitely. To see, you know, this is from a creature design character course I made. And so I do um, character designs like this. Uh, where is he? Where is he? It's, it's unloaded. Unloaded. it's black. You did the whole thing. You painted I did the whole, the whole thing. I, I, it, was, <laughs> it was a simpler period for me. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I do these like I do these very detailed characters and things, and it's nice, but it's a huge time sink. And this is a different feel, you know, um, than than quiet, completely different feel. And then a lot of my game design work as well is um, very, you know, it's it's muy complicado. 
basically is what I'll say. <laughs> yes. And so, and so I'm kind totally of just like really focused um, from here on out um, with this project, at least in really trying to um, focus on making things simple and like really, because I think that I will find more joy. And I actually think that my more complex work will benefit from it. Um, because I do think, we mentioned this yesterday, I do think that art is, the different fields of art are complementary. And the more we know about how to do one thing, the more effectively we can do another. Absolutely. So, yeah. Totally, completely kind of agree. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's also the challenge with digital art, because now you have this thing on the canvas right now that is infinitely editable rather than an image that you've planned out and are making with traditional marks. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I think it just adds another layer of you know, it's a gift and a curse, <laughs> as we said yesterday, I think, uh, it where it's like, yeah, you have infinite control, but that means you have infinite control. <laughs> like, that's not always a good thing. No, it's true. And, and then, it, then it kind of doesn't, you know, it doesn't end, you know, um, mm -hmm. what it needs to end. And, and I, that's actually one thing, one reason I really have fallen for traditional media in some way, because it made me, I'm quite serious about this, it made me have to stop. It made me have to walk away. Um, that felt really real to me, you know, that this kind of feeling of like, like I need, especially when it, these pieces that like basically are not, um, um, they're not like for a production pipeline, you know, they don't have to be a certain way. Um, I want it to feel like, um, like at a certain point, I like, just need to stop. I need to like, walk away and just enjoy what I've done. So for sure. Uh, so speaking much, of, whoa, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's okay. I was just saying to myself, I need to actually um, break down what I'm doing into a couple different layers because I'm, I'm realizing I'm making things too complicated for myself. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it can really quickly, like you fall into your habits when talking and drawing at the same time. So I'm just warning you now. That's, yes, that's totally true. something I do a lot. Um, <laughs> but, um, what I was going to say is speaking of which we were talking about finding an ending with the drawings, but also Finn was wondering, do you have an ending for quiet story in mind or is it open-ended so far? Uh, great question. Um, I do not have a, an ending in mind yet. Um, I'm kind of so, I don't know where, where quiet as a, as a story will take me as a, take me as a professional. Um, and so I don't know how much to invest in, in, in him yet. I need to see kind of like how much feedback there is um, out there, you know, in the audience. Um, right. You know, and basically just, you know, cause, because it's, it's, I know myself very well. And I know that if I dive into a project, I'm going to be diving in like mm -hmm. really hard. Um, and so I kind of recognize that if I'm going to be doing this, I need to think, really hard about um, what I can put into it uh, in a smart, you know, way. Mm, right. I mean, yeah, I may have taken more chances when I was a little bit younger and kind of just gone for it. But these days, you know, got a baby, uh, got a fam, all these yeah. things. Got to make, got to make sure that I'm spending my time in a way that that is best for my family. And Absol you know. absolutely, yeah, being efficient with it is. I mean, that's how you live life to the fullest, and how you make sure there's time to like. I know we've, we're probably going to talk about this even more, but like the best way to be an artist is like living a full life outside of art and mm -hmm. have other things, which is why it's so lovely that you have a whole family and everything. Also, I was curious, what's your daughter's name? How old is she? She is, my daughter's name is Naomi, Naomi. and she is um, one year old, one and a half. She just turned one and a half, like, uh, uh, like yesterday, I think. Oh my um, gosh! Or two happy days ago, yeah. Half birthday to her. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, she, she. We don't. We did not do anything special for her. <laughs> you didn't um, bake half a cake. Come on. <laughs> I know, right? Um, actually, I don't think she's ever tasted cake. I think. <gasps> I know. Well, here's the thing: is I love cake, oh, no. and I'm. You know, I don't want to. My daughter has a very powerful fondness for food. Um, and she always wants what you're eating, and she always like is hungry for something. And um, to the point where like, basically we can't really eat in front of her um, because she just wow. like, uh, uh, uh. Like need me yeah. now. <laughs> um, and so um, 
I don't want to introduce her to too much sugar right away because she's going to just fall in love and be like, well, that's my new favorite thing. Yup. Um, it's going to happen right now, someday. Yeah, right now she's, she's ignorant enough that we can give her like yogurt or like, you know, um, you know, some, some vegetables that we had baked the night before just cut up and, you know, and be like, look, there you go. Mmm. And she's like, mmm. Oh. But like, <laughs> but she doesn't know better. She doesn't know that cake is a thing. You know? Yeah. She's not going to say this isn't an Oreo. How dare you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And when that day comes, I know I can see her look already. She's be like, you didn't tell me that this was a thing. You were you holding out. Know, two years without a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of she'll remember you? yeah she'll remember yeah <laughs> oh it's so funny it reminds me of my parents because um my mom was that like oh we're gonna be healthy and so i didn't know that there was a hostess cupcake in the world until my Oof. dad brought one home when i was like 10 years old Oof. i was like what <laughs> <laughs> how dare you <laughs> I mean, probably set up, you know, health in the long run, but still, but still yes. mental yes. health. <sighs> Come on. Uh, by the way, Wade is saying something very interesting. <clears throat> Jonah, will yes. Quiet feature in any of your patented freestyle rap or maybe a companion album? Oh, good question. Yes, probably at some point. <laughs> no point. What is this? You freestyle rap? I do. What? Ooh. Oh my gosh, I Jonah, <laughs> man of many talents. That's amazing. I was, I was, I was. Um, it was years ago. It was right after I graduated college, and I was hanging out with some friends. Um, they, you know, lived nearby me, and um, two of them just started rapping, and like it was kind of, and they were just freestyle rapping, just like they had a, they had a beat. They started rapping, and kind of just being ridiculous and very funny. Mm -hmm. And I was like. And they, and they and it was so obvious they were, they were just having so much fun and these there are two of these friends of mine who were just like just messing around no no one's trying to be cool no one's you know gangster rapping it's just like just rhymes you know yeah. just see if you can rhyme to a beat and it was so fun to watch that I was like I really want I want to know how to do that yeah and so I um I got my friend to burn me a CD of um uh of of like you know rhythms basically mm -hmm. and i just kind of started doing doing it in the car on my way to work um and it was a great way to pass the time and it got really fun and i discovered that i kind of just had a knack for it um nice. yeah and so i will not be pursuing any hip-hop albums in the next couple of years <laughs> but it but... is some fun, fun fun thing to do on stream sometime i will say um and people I are pretty that. People are pretty cool about uh, the people. People seem to enjoy it. You know, it's fun. It's fun to see people, someone make a make a fool out of themselves. So <laughs> it's not making a fool to be able to like put aside. It's that confidence of just being able to like put aside anything for creativity's sake. By the way, if you ever want to get into <laughs> the children's book world, rhyming is a huge skill. Like knowing how to, you know, put things to a uh, what do you call it? Like a rhyme scheme, mm -hmm. um, get the right number of syllables and all that jazz. <laughs> oh, when there's, there's one book that we have that, um, the, the, there's the rhyme scheme. It's all about like on the day you were born and like, it's all this, like this sweet sappy stuff about like how the world stood still when my daughter was born or whatever, yeah. you know, all these like silly things that somebody had handed down to us. But every time I read it, I get furious because the rhyme scheme is just <laughs> tight. And I'm like, I'm like, this, this is a deal. We're, we're talking about like an, a 10 page book. Like you had 10 pages to edit. You had time to finagle the language to get all the, you know, the, the beat and like the flow, like the whatever yeah. going. Rhythm, and, yeah. And, and it. honestly, it sounds ridiculous. It makes me so angry. Cause I'm like, you- Time to rewrite to it. My Show dog, and it, like it's not, it's not good. And because the rhyme scheme's all off and yeah. Oh, and, then so when I, and then when I read a book that has a really good rhyme scheme, I'm like, yeah. Girl, Naomi, you hearing yeah. this? Get into this. this exactly, is right? Yeah. This is a jam. <laughs> I read, I, I, we stayed at a house in Vermont recently and they had all these little Dr. Zeus books. Yeah. And I got into the Grinch Stole Christmas. I was like, I, this is my jam. Like, <laughs> he is like, I mean, everything, everything. Dr. Zeus, I mean, he does not mess around. Like, he is... He could be a spin doctor. He was good. Absolutely. Every word perfectly placed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. And I look forward to your rhyming compendium. You know, you're going to make one. One day it'll happen. One day. 
Uh, by the way, if you guys have not checked out Jonah's Instagram, you can find all of quiet stories on there that Jonah reads himself. So you can hear his, his way of telling stories through mm. quiet story on Instagram. Um, by the way, Cartier, Cartier. Oh gosh. If I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry. Uh, says, what was your process to dialing back your style from heavily rendered to simplistic? Do you have any tips for that? Um, that's a great question, um, Cartier. Um, and Cartier, yes, I do. Um, so I, um, um, let me see if I can pull a couple things up. Um, I started, fo when I started focusing more and more about the big shape language of, um, of what I was working on, I um, started thinking more and more about kind of how to keep things simple. Um, and so for instance, uh, here's an image. Uh, I, I, actually, let me just pull up the um the basic here it's called when i first started doing these drawings uh pen and ink i uh started focusing a lot i started i started doing like the, these figures floating in space because i was a character artist and i was doing these characters yeah. and i was kind of just making them floating in space and whatever and then the, the more i did them the more i started thinking about let's just think about the the whites and the blacks and the blacks and the whites on the page and how they um contrast against each other and so on a piece like this, um, this is called Writhe, and, and it, the yellow here that you see uh, is actually, or the orange is actually gold. When I, I, when I print it and make prints of it, uh, I use a gold pen on those. But That's if so you cool. take the, the levels and you look at it like this, you um, kind of see that it's basically, it's, it's white and black um, mm. is the layout. And because the word of the day that inspired this was Writhe, I was thinking much more about the action of all these snakes going around Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to express that in this, in just this layout where you can almost not see any details. And then when I made them in, um, uh, we used pen and ink, you know, again, I, I said, I said I had 10 different markers. I use like three here. I use like black yes. and then like th maybe th two or three shades of gray mm -hmm. and that's it. And then the, all from the low end of things. And the reason for that was because I didn't want to get into this extremely, you know, nuanced, shading and lighting and coloring because this was the point um right. and so yes i had detail and that's kind of like you know my thing in many ways but um I, when i started thinking about these things as shapes um and uh, of light and dark i started thinking a lot more about um uh pumping the uh, the basic composition pumping all my effort into that uh, effort and thought um so this is my, another example, this is my most um, successfully selling um, art print at, you know, Comic-Cons and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's called so uh, Vanquish. And it's got this, it's just kind of this this white knight versus the, this dark knight. Um, but the dark knight is injured. You can see, the, 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 again, the orange here is supposed to, is gold in person. So cool. But, um, you know, he's injured and he's kind of on the offense and he's taking his time, et cetera. And then we have this kind of face in the middle. But essentially, when I designed it, the idea was very, very, very simple, which is just white versus a white knight versus the, a black knight. Right. And this yeah. right here, what you're looking at, this is the essential shape. And even if even this looks complicated, I can I can kind of simplify it even further, and just do basically, you know, it's it's just this. Right. You know, basically right there. And so essentially, you have this black shape floating in white there's a white shape floating in black right um and and you have this kind of dichotomy and then you have in all these different little lines here um that go through the red through the rock they all kind of point they kind of curve down right. on him a little bit mm -hmm. and on the bottom here as well and so they're all kind of designed to kind of catch the eye in various ways and then again it, when it comes to this character and the spokes of power radiating radiating out from him I have these kind of white lines kind of shooting in towards him. Um, Rays. So kind of like I, I put, by putting all my marbles into the, the simplicity of mm -hmm. that, then all the detail I add on top of that, um, all is in service of the underlying compositional things. And so there's a lot of details in this work. There could be so many more but there could also be so many less and the whole thing would, would hold together just as well. Right, the structure, you're building on that foundation. 
Building on the foundation, exactly, exactly. And really thinking about like, again, when I sat down to, to do this, I really just thought, okay, white on dark and dark on white. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that 90% of my effort um, was directed towards making sure that that integrity was kept. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps um, answer the question of, you know, how do you go from simple back to, from, from complex back to simple. And, you know, as you can see, I, I still add lots of complexity but the complexity is all is, is all designed to accentuate the simplicity. Definitely. Very well put. Thank you so much for that answer. Thank you for the question. <laughs> uh, all right. I want you to keep painting for sure. I'm just going to throw some things at you. Some compliments, really. Uh, Sariel says, I dig a children's book format uh, allowed to... Sorry reading uh format allowed to have darker and more mature feels which i think we can all agree on would be super super cool Definitely. um always Definitely. good to first of all not talk down to children but also like everybody can enjoy an epic story it's not going to uh necessarily i don't know i think sometimes parents think it'll frighten the child and man if kids can watch nightmare before christmas they can yeah. get through anything <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie and even I'm even I'm like they made this for kids like, oh yeah who? big time I think that's a good edge to kind of pay attention to and uh, that's my niece's favorite movie at the moment so <laughs> yeah I mean I think you know here's the the reality of the of the world is that the world is scary like oh, yeah. it's full of very scary things and and I think as you know denizens of planet earth um we inherently know that, you mm -hmm. know, we understand what fear is and all that stuff. And these days there's so much less to be scared of in the world because we, you know, we're very unlikely to get killed by a bear um, on the way to work. Um, but still like, you know, we, it's a part of us. Fear is a part of us. And I think that to um, put rubber walls on everything and make sure that kids can't hurt themselves um, on the playground or, you know, put rubber walls around their emotions. It doesn't, really work i mean it's important to like make sure that the kid doesn't knock out their eye um whether physically or emotionally no but permanent like, damage yes. but like yeah but like <laughs> you know a movie or a story you know can't hurt mm -hmm. and if it's a little scary i say that helps kids prepare for the world you know right. um i know you know i mean maybe i'm biased also because i just loved kind of i didn't love scary movies per se but i liked monsters Mm -hmm. and things like that and i love things sure. that arouse my curiosity um so yeah i say I, i'm with serial like let let the kids have 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 some scary scariness i think that that kind of just adds flavor i mean actually even like something like harry potter the first couple you know the first um book or two of harry potter is not not that scary but there's definitely scary parts but harry potter gets real dark you know it yeah. gets <laughs> And, and sure. nobody was going around being like, I think it's too dark for children. You know, everyone was kind of like, this is a great, this is a great book. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And kids never felt like, oh, I'm having nightmares because of it. No. It's very balanced, I'd say. So it's not just all doom and gloom or anything like that. It's uh, adversity that you have to overcome kind of thing, which is very much life. <laughs> which is life. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Uh, Serial also says, Jonah, idea. How about a rhyming book for adults, still with illustrations portraying different rap-inspired poetry texts? So you got mm. many things on your plate now. <laughs> that is, yes, that is interesting. I'm kind of wondering. I'm like, who's my target demographic? Who wants that? Us, all of us here. I know, I know, right I, know I know, I know. In our, in our, in our nerd like group. Oh yeah, I definitely. Sell like fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of, like it, it's funny because as like a fantasy author, I like often have to like think to myself, okay, like why would like but why would like a normal person care about my story? Like, and mm -hmm. I need to make sure that they can, you know, like my the stories that I tell, like they have to be relatable to everybody. And so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, I'm like, who wants a rhyming book? But like, how do you package that? I like that idea. Mm -hmm. How do you? What's what's gonna make, you know, your you know like I don't know. I don't know. Marketing, man. It's, it's a whole thing. Like we talked about thing. yesterday, the elevator pitch and everything. Mm -hmm. It's 
I feel like you could sell almost any concept to almost anyone if you have a good enough pitch where it's just like, yeah, it reaches them. Yeah. <laughs> Even exactly. if it's not like, oh, I'm not into that. It's not my thing. Like I am very much not into horror movies, but certain ones are really good and you can't deny that. Like it's, totally. it doesn't have to be your genre to be very good. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my wife is the same way. She doesn't like horror movies per se, but if it's good, like, you know, like she, she watches, she goes on and on about like 28 days later. And then every time we sit down to watch 28 days later in the first 10 minutes, she's like, why did I, why did I suggest this? Yeah. Like, I don't, ooh, like, have we made a mistake? Should we watch like the good place? Like what should we, and then by the <laughs> end, like, God, that's a good movie. You know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Paco agrees. Says so not a fan of horror movies at all until I watched 28 days later. <laughs> Apparently it changes ah, minds. <laughs> It was a good, that was a good one. But I remember being in, I remember being in theaters and I, we showed up late um, to the, to the, um, to the movie. And it came in right at a moment of like such, such horrible brutality where we almost, we didn't, and we didn't know what we were watching yet. So I was just like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could be here. Like, this is, this is a lot. Um, I gotta but go. it ended up being, yeah, one of the best cinematic experiences. Absolutely. Um, some people are also talking about Coraline and Brave Little Toaster as being creepy movies. <laughs> Wait, I've never heard of Brave Little, Brave Little Toaster. You've never heard of Brave Little Toaster. Oh, it's oh. classic. It's one of those, um, is it Don Bluth, I believe, animations? Uh, like, I think, I, I don't want to say that if I'm wrong, but um, Don Bluth did like uh, Secret of Nim. Have you ever seen that? Oh my gosh. that Yeah, talk about scary as a kid. Like that's, Oh yeah. That movie really scared me, but I got to tell you, it was, I think it was truly one of the most, it, it left such an impression on me. And I think that so much of why I like what I like has to do with movies like Secret of Nim. Right. It's that, that yeah, like soft characters put into a harsh world. They got to fight through it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, and not pulling any punches and it was scary. And, you know, I remember the giant owl. I remember the villains. I remember the backdrops and the colors and all that. I saw it, I saw it a bunch of years ago and I was, I was kind of like, mm, this is not quite as good as I remember it being. Oh, really? I need yeah, to just, the, it. just the story. You know, it was just kind of like the, the way it was told. But the visuals mm. were still spectacular. So, Right. And for kids, I feel like that really sticks in your mind is just the visuals of it all. Like, I remember the jewel that she had being so amazing looking. <laughs> it's so funny, but things like that, like a little glint off of a jewel. That's what I remember from childhood. <laughs> like, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I remember the, the, the scene from the, um, when she goes to visit the owl and it's in a, in a moth land or it's, it's something, I think it's a moth. And I remember him kind of like twisting his head around and then just snapping it up. And then the feathers, you know, like in his mouth, not the feathers. Oh, the yeah. And I remember his big taloned gnarled feet walking. I mean, it just made, it blew my, my little brain. I was just Absolutely. like, it is something, this is like, and I think there was something special about the fact that it was scary, you know, because, because there was a certain level of like, this is my, it's, it, this movie scares me, but it's my movie. And like, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm, I'm, and I'm okay to be scared by like it because it's like it's my own adventure, and I'm like a big kid, and I can watch this. You know, it is funny how you t mentally take um, ownership over certain things, where it's like, no, I, this is, I like this. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. Um, by the way, uh, <laughs> Howard Pinsky says, "quote You want a, <laughs> you want a scary kit." Wait. Sorry, I have to put on a voice to read this. <laughs> you want scary kid? Pull up a chair and listen to a story of 2020. <laughs> Oof. 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 I, re I, I, saw, I saw a meme recently that was like um, from Back to the Future. And it's the doc, you know, in, you know sitting in the DeLorean being like, and whatever you do, don't press it to the year 2020. <laughs> <laughs> just avoid that. All time travelers, oh. just red bubble. Nope, don't touch. <laughs> what a year. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Oh. I'm so excited for, for 2021 and the, and the, 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 the fresh horrors it'll bring. <laughs> no, we're all going to turn it around together, right? We're going to make Woo! this the best year ever for everyone. We're going to reach out to everyone and make sure they're having a good time. I love that. And I totally agree with that. And I really feel <laughs> like that's, yeah, I mean, like you're half joking, but it's also like, yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what it's about. I think, I mean, if I've learned anything from this year, reaching out is the best thing you could possibly do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And and I totally agree. I think that's one thing that's really special about being here, you know, and, and, and being able to stream for people and also just being able to stream on any platform, just, you know, just having friends and meeting people online. And I think, I think yeah, it's a good call. It's a great call. 
Totally right. Uh, Catherine has a question, by the way. A uh, question about the differences between tr uh, traditional quiet and digital quiet. The media affects how your uh, how much your work flows, and if so, how do you think having more freedom slash er er erasing slash redoing gets in the way? So it's basically your workflow from digital to traditional. Um, we've kind of talked a little bit about uh, some of this, but I guess uh, the main question is: Do you think having more freedom digitally gets in the way? Great question. Um, great question. Um, do I think more freedom gets in the way? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it probably does. Um, I think I think it, it reduces the pressure. I'll, I'll say that. Um, but I think there's... Yeah, and and then when it, and it makes me think a lot more when I when I worked traditionally, I have to think a lot more about workflow. You know, like mm -hmm. what I'm going to do when, and I got to kind of plan it out. And so, actually, in some ways, it's very beneficial for me as an artist because that was the one thing I didn't like to do before. <laughs> and it, I've really, I just feel like I'm just much better because I now take the time to like think about process that much more. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, but I'm also like a perfectionist. And so it really depends on kind of what I'm working with. So for instance, I've done these, these illustrations for quiet. And, um, and if I was working, working, if I was doing them digitally, um, I could really maximize them. You know, like the, there's elements of like, for instance, this picture that I just don't like that much. And I, that I would have changed, um, you know, things like gradients, things, like, you know, adjusting colors, you know, sometimes, you know, adding, adding a value and then wishing I hadn't, you know, mm -hmm. or I having like, look, you can see here, on his face, like the marker, like got thick there, you know, that kind of thing. And so <laughs> I think it's lovely. I wish I could, could take back and fix, you know, um, but, but finishing a piece of art traditionally and knowing that, that you have to put it down and you have to walk away mm -hmm. because if you continue to work on it, you'll actually, there's a bell curve, right? Like you'll actually make it worse. Right. Um, always. Oh, and with digital, you can that. just finesse and finagle and you can kind of, you know, keep working back back and forth, etc., and um, and that lends itself highly to like kind of perfectionism. And there ain't nothing wrong with perfectionism, but it just means that. But perfectionism takes a really long time. And so, I think if you are working traditionally, there's a certain inherent value to a piece of original art. You know. Mm -hmm. um, where it's, it, it is an object that implicitly has value. You can touch it, you can hold it with your hand. And so the mistakes that I make, all the little mistakes that pile up in any given image or things I wish I'd done differently, um, they become part of the imperfection of the piece and, and part, of, part of what makes it special and part of what, make it, what makes it unique. And you can make the same mistakes in a digital format and it's not nearly as endearing or value adding, you know, because it, at that point you're like, well, it's digital. You could, un you didn't have to have that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that as a, perf as somebody who's a perfectionist, um, it can be very detrimental to me to be confined to um, a digital format where I kind of have no excuse, but to get it right, you know? Um, right. So when, um, so I can create things that are, that look, that much more complex and nuanced, et cetera, than on that I can digitally, uh, uh, traditionally. But there's also like kind of a step down in kind of then kind of value, you know, and kind of like, there's, or, or not value. There's a step down in kind of like they can't, it's no longer kind of worth quite as much in my mind. Um, and it doesn't force me to think about process in the same way. Um, I don't have to. And so it, it always, I don't know, hard, hard to explain really. I think there's something, you know, there's something really wonderful about handcrafting something. Mm -hmm. And when it was done, when it's done, it's done and you can, and you can kind of put it down. Um, and, and it's, and it's freeing in some ways. And so I think that, that I kind of blame, I do blame uh, digital for kind of getting in the way of that a little bit, um, <laughs> which is, which blame is. Blame it. <laughs> Shake your fist at Photoshop. <laughs> I would never. I would never. I would never. I would never. Yeah, I would reach I out. Would, I love it too much. <laughs> By the way, Stephen asks uh, along the same kind of lines. Uh, do you find practicing real world drawing or traditional uh, will help translate uh, to painting in Photoshop, or is it better to stay on the computer if digital painting is what you're aiming for? Great question. Um, 
great question. And the answer is, uh, I think there's always value in doing traditional. Um, I love sketching in a sketchbook. I love sketching in a sketchbook and nothing I make in a sketchbook will ever, I mean, especially my sketchbooks are pretty, pretty lame. They're pretty bad. Um, and nothing will ever see the light of day. It doesn't matter, you know, to me. Um, I like, right. I like the act of sketching. I like I like touching paper. Um, I feel like I learn a lot from the process. Um, and it's, it's, it definitely translates because ultimately I think a lot of people, you know, get concerned about what tools they are using and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I, I'm sure you can agree, you know, a lot of times the tool doesn't matter that much. Um, yep. it matters that you spent time to try to make, try to, to try to draw good, you know? <laughs> Um, and so I good. find, yeah, just, Journal yeah, load. just focusing on the drawing of good, <laughs> of the good drawing. Um, so I think people do kind of get a little, um, worried that if they, if they do some pencil sketching or something that it will kind of interfere, um, or kind of it, it's, it's time poorly spent, but it's not, it's really not, uh, mm -hmm. I can guarantee it. Definitely agree. And I've also heard of people having a sketchbook for them and a sketchbook for like, drawing drawings where they want to um show or somehow like be proud of what they make in one and then the other is just for them uh and honestly i'd say just for them is the the base of like yes everybody should have something like that and then if you want a pretty one you can make one but it doesn't have to exist uh and that also comes back to something my mentor used to say he was again full of pearls of wisdom uh so yesterday we heard always do never done um, and today it is, oh, what was it? It was uh, thinkings instead of drawings. And that's the messy stuff is you're just thinking on paper. So it's not mm -hmm. necessarily anything you're gonna show. It's just getting the thoughts out so that you can make it into something you wanna show. Couldn't agree more. Um, couldn't agree more. I, I, made, I made a really good decision a bunch of years ago, um, which was inspired by a friend of mine who kind of basically, you know, told me to do this. Mm -hmm. And and I did it and it was the best decision I made in a long time, which is I started buying sketchbooks and just drawing haphazardly in them all the time mm -hmm. and not and not worrying or planning for any of it to be good. Um, some of the people who are watching now, um, a lot of my followers, et cetera, um, they know they've heard this from me a million times. You know, I think there's a great victory in making bad art. And I, I, I basically get, I started, I started basically getting a sketchbook and just drawing it in it all the time and never anticipating that anything I would do in it would be, would be good. And in fact, I would buy it. And then to really get myself in the zone and get myself in the mood, I wrote on the outside of it, bad art. Yes. <laughs> in, so that it's, so that its purpose was simply for me to have a place to just spit out or just vomit out bad art. And what happened when I did that is I started learning a lot faster because I started making art much more because I no longer had fear of the blank page. I was kind of like, you know what? This will be bad art. I'm announcing it right now. And yeah. so I'm gonna do it anyway. And basically you're kind of, what you're doing when you do that is you're giving yourself permission to, to just explore and to not worry about what the end result's gonna look like um, or what it would be like to show somebody. Just decide you're not gonna show anybody. And right. It's just, it's just for you. Um, and I started going through through so many more sketchbooks and, I, and because I was going through so many more sketchbooks, I started just learning faster. Um, yeah, for so sure. highly recommend it, absolutely, absolutely. Sariel says, thank goodness, because some days that's all the art I make. <laughs> Me Which I, too. Everybody, Me yeah. Too. Absolutely. I truly think that that, I mean, I believe in my heart of hearts after being an artist for this many years, I think that's integral, integral for the process. It means you're growing. It means you're doing something that's going to be built on. Uh, and I remember uh, I actually took a 3D modeling, modeling class, which uh, I know that you have some 3D experience, but I'm not sure about all of the background here. You were modeling, texturing, lighting. What did you do? I was I was modeling and texturing. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and when I first took that class, it was very like just beginner stuff. And uh, the teacher said, OK, so we're going to spend this entire semester building a building <laughs> in 3D. Mm. And next term, when you come back for the second part of this class, we're going to make it in one day and it's going to be better quality. <laughs> oh. I love that because it was like, yeah, you 
it takes so long to learn a thing to just do it once. But the second time, it's a lot faster and it's a lot better. And that's the whole point is like, if you fail more, that means that those, those are the building blocks you're sitting on, you know, you're just getting up taller or whatever analogy you want to put by that. <laughs> I think that's exactly right. That's exactly right. I think, I think, you know, sometimes we sit down and we make art and we want it to be good and it's not. And we look, you know, from that, from, in my mind, I'm like, well, good. I just learned how to not do that thing. <laughs> right, right, right. Or I learned like, um, I learned, you know, I, you know, in my life, I have to learn this same lesson, you know, 17 times in order to get it right. You know, great. I just learned it like once or twice more, you know, I'm that much closer to, you know, sitting down and making, you know, and, and when I make, you know, I make art and I know this is, this is the circumstance with any, like, you know, uh, um, industry artist who's been working long enough that when people see them work, they go, wow, you're so good. Whereas like, all we see are mistakes, you know, oh, all we see are, are our own imperfections and, um, but that's just that just shows you that we are, we're that that you're trained to basically just regard the the, the next step in front of you and just, and just to do a, a piece of art by a piece of art by a piece of art. Agreed. Uh, by the way, a technical question. Rubina mm -hmm. says, "Hello, sir. Are you using a PC or tablet for sketching? So um, what good kind question. of gear?" <laughs> good question. What kind of gear? So I'm working on a um, Cintiq 21 UX. Um, which is a, a Cintiq tablet. Um, it's a little, um, it's old. It's like 10 years old. I remember uh, yesterday when we were trying to set this up, Paco was like, hmm, your ratio is like early. Like weird. How old is this thing? And I was like, it's, don't, <clears throat> don't ask. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a little wonky, um, but um, yes, but that's what I need. But it does the work. And then I recently got um, a, um, uh, uh, an iPad. And so oh, I've been nice. using that as well. And I'm really into that. There's something that's something that feels a lot more like normal drawing to me um, mm. on the iPad actually than um, on the Cintiq. Part of that is because I have an ancient Cintiq. And so I probably would feel better or if I'd probably feel differently if I had, um, if I had a, a, a more modern one and I'm not a, I'm not a big Apple like fan. I have mm. an iPhone and all that, but I kind of, you know, I'm kind of one of those people who like uses their products, but grudgingly. <laughs> um i'm a pc uh, I'm, I'm definitely a pc guy day. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i just i just can't um i just can't hate on on the 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 drawing technology on the ipad it's just pretty pretty nice mm -hmm. that's awesome um by the way uh here we go do, 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 do. uh fairy is asking do you mean pen tablet or mouse and it's a tablet with a pen or stylus mm-hmm uh, that's what Wacom is. And if you're drawing with a mouse, woo, more power to you. But like tablets are awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, more power to you. I think I think that if if you're very if anyone out there is serious about um, uh, wanting to learn how to make art and make it digitally, I think you will have to get rid of your mouse. I think I think it will be time. And and these days, you know, you can get um, little pressure sensitive tablets for like what is it like a hundred hundred dollars basically. You know that, that you can just and they'll last you. The last few years i mean they mm -hmm. really they're pretty hardy beasts they've been making them for a long time now and and it's really just nice and there's nothing i think that i mean at least for me um you know one reason that i, I like to use it so much is because it really makes me feel like i can i can be moving my hand in a much more kind of flowy way as opposed to move click move click also for i will sure. say you can definitely do some biological damage to yourself if you're clicking all the time um, oh, let's do our, our message. Take care of your body. Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> yeah, it's super important to make sure everything's ergonomic so you can last as a human being because you are your best tool, always. Absolutely, absolutely. And and you'd be you'd be shocked at how quickly things can fall apart if you don't if you don't watch yourself. For sure. Um, yeah. Ergonomic chair. Sit up straight. We mm -hmm. all need to <laughs> Oh yeah, drink water if you need it. <laughs> drink water. Oh yeah. 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 Let's do a water break. Yeah. Also, Mercurial Forte said Edison didn't fail 1,000 times. He learned 1,000 ways not to make a light bulb. There you exactly. Go. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Edison, what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, he, I mean, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I think, and nobody, nobody remembers 
all the times, all the times he got things wrong. Absolutely. Literally, like, no one ever sits around being like, well, he was, you know, he got lucky. You know, no, he did not get lucky. He, he hit his head, he hit his head against a wall for years and then finally figured some things out. That's what most of the, yeah, like any great inventors or artists or anything, it's, it's not that they were sitting there and being like, oh, I'll just make some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm gonna is be how brilliant. we always imagine them, right? Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm Edison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Kendall says monkey paws have entered the chat, which is a reference to my streams because we do a hand stretch called monkey paws uh, so that everybody remembers to stretch their hands. Make sure you What's, take care of them. Can I, what, what is a monkey paw specific exercise? Yes. Uh, it's just four poses for your hands. If you want to do them with me, we can totally do that. Oh my God, let's do um, it. Just a reminder, we have about an hour left in the stream and in about a half hour, we're going to do an artist spotlight. So we are going to highlight one of you guys. It's going to be awesome. So stick around for that. Uh, so monkey paws, we have to put our arms out in front of us straight. Uh, everybody can join in on this and you have to say what I say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you put your fingers to the sky and then you curl them down into what we call a monkey paw. And then you have to go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, ooh, ah. Good job. Yes, Jonah. <laughs> I'm really good at this. <laughs> yeah, you're amazing. Good job. So then we go down with our fingers, palms towards ourselves, and curl our fingers in. Ooh, ooh, ah. Ooh, ooh, ah. ah. That's much more. <laughs> Do you feel That's it? My, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we flip our hands around, fingers down, but palms out, and then yeah. curl our fingers in. Ooh, ooh, ah. Ooh, ooh, ah. ah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Yeah, and then we put our hands towards ourselves, palms towards ourselves, fingers to the sky. There we go. Uh, fingers curled. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> wow. And so you just repeat those four poses, holding for a few seconds each, about 10 times. And if you do that every, like, you know, they recommend every hour or something, as much as you can, as much as you can, like, remind yourself and work it into your schedule, it's better for your hands. That's great. And then great. you just gently shake them out to loosen them back up. And you're good. That's a really good. That's a really good exercise. Thank you. Of course, yeah. I have to give credit to Olivia Wen. She's an amazing artist. Uh, you've probably seen her work on Google Doodles, and she did a little graphic uh, showing those stretches. And I stole them, and I tell them to everyone. <laughs> well done. Nice stealing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> good stealing. Good job. Good stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Same to you about the shirt. <laughs> good stealing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh. All right. So let me think. I'm trying to think about my next step, uh, you know, like, like I'm kind of just trying to, trying to be tactical now about like what, how I'm going to approach this. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. uh, Cody Bear reminds everyone to save their work as well and drink water and stretch their wrists. Safe. Okay, great. I think. All right. <laughs> so I think I need to. So I guess I'm, the problem is I'm getting a little. The light from the torch mm -hmm. should not be. Like it should not be like blue on them. It should be orange. I feel. Mm, um, okay. And so I need to figure that out. I need to balance it out because what I want also is I kind of want a cool blue light, but I'm also just mm -hmm. thinking like, okay, what realistically is going to get lit up by this torch? Mm -hmm. so I need to figure out where that blue comes in. So is and it I like ambient blue all over, but the torch is casting orange? Yes, I think that's mm -hmm. exactly right. And I've just kind of so cool. yeah. All right, maybe I have to like break this down in separate ways okay so i think because i do like this blue color i think it's really cool mm -hmm. um, <laughs> literally really yes yeah exactly. yeah so maybe <laughs> i should maybe i should gosh i don't know um what do you think anna oh gosh uh what <laughs> about like blue versus orange or like i don't know like what would we your know, next step maybe i should i should create like a just soft general gradient I do want that. I, so basically, what, before I kind of was trying to do both at once, I was trying to do general lighting. Mm. Um, and so, um, oops. So I'm just trying to think of like how to balance um, everything. So here, so right now, for instance, this is my like, um, you know, gradient in. Yeah. So there's, and so in addition to the one lighting scheme, I have this kind of gradient in. Um, and then I'll do kind of a, a additional gradient in here and then here um, and then down, down here. Um, okay. And then I can go into this other layer. See, even that, even that looks overdone to me. 
No, I love it. What do you talk? What do you say? Really? I feel like putting that gradient over the sharp edge of the light adds so much dimension and it instantly looks like, but I mean, that's just me. <laughs> Chat, what do you think? <laughs> that's, yeah, what do you got? What, what does everyone think? I mean, I'm, it's kind of, there's a lot of things to be done, but I'm trying to figure out how to, um, how to, how to kind of do those things in a structured way. Like what makes sense um, from a, a kind of, uh, you know, breaking down into workflow approach. That's kind of, that's kind of where, where my head's at. Mm. Um, so yeah, but we'll figure it out. I agree. I mean, workflow is it, such a, a wispy thing to catch. I mean, it's <laughs> different mm. every piece, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, at least for me, I, I guess like the best time I had a good workflow was uh, working on a book that was 48 pages long. You have to mm. then. <laughs> but when you're doing just like piece to piece and they're all kind of, you're trying to push yourself into being a better artist and, you know, growing and all that stuff. Workflow can be the most elusive thing to like, <laughs> oh, mm. should I change how I think about these pieces and how I'm going about rendering them and all that stuff? Totally. Totally, absolutely, and and it's like I could jump in and I could just start painting, but I think I do think I need to like think about kind of how this is going to proceed and kind of the best way to make my life easy, so that right. if I need to adjust any kind of levels, I can do that. So I'm gonna first things first. I will probably um, create like like a little bit more softness in this barrier in this in this light. Right. That will that will help? Um, so edge control. Edge control exactly. Um, yeah, I didn't realize until a couple of years ago that like edges were a thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think everybody has a revelation when they're like, wait, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause usually it's like you start as a hard edge artist or a soft edge artist, <laughs> especially with digital stuff. Cause there's right. so much control. Yeah. And, um, and you either tend to go like too hard or too soft either way. And so you kind of mm -hmm. like learn to, to balance them and then you learn when to balance them. And I'm still in that stage. I still don't, still don't I mean, really know all? yet. Like how, <laughs> how, how do you edge? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is like, well, also you're talking about your traditional stuff that you're always trying to like blend the markers and things like that. So right. you're edge controlling with traditional, but then it's a little bit more uh, intuitive, I'd guess, because the hard edges come with the ink. So you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't have to question that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, by the way, Jake Green says, I'm just seeing the dragon priest mask behind Jonah. Do you have a little something in your background? I do. I do. That's <laughs> these two things here. I'll yes. I just, I just got this one from a fan. Oh. Um, so these are from Skyrim, the game Skyrim that I worked on. Oh my um, gosh. That is so, so cool. Yeah, isn't that fun? I designed these um, for the game. Um, and <laughs> I have a couple different versions that people have made. So this is a guy just send this to me. Um, and this is a woman in uh, Puerto Rico. She made this wooden oh. one. Oh my gosh. They both independently made these masks. Yeah. Oh yeah. That no, is so you, cool. If you look on Etsy, like there's a lot of these, a lot of, these. I have another one over here. Um, oh, we lost Jonah. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> and so this one oh. is designed to look like metal. That is so crazy. Cool. You've got three of this design. That is so cool. Well, in the game Skyrim, there's, um, uh, I think, nine of these, and they're made oh. in different materials. Well, and then you're really behind in your collection. <laughs> I'm really behind. I, I do have, like, three others, but um, but when I was back at home, I, my wife was like, okay, you can put up, like, three, and that's, like, all you can put up. And then <laughs> when, I, when I had to move my, my home office, I was kind of like, well, I have to pack some of these away until I can get, like, my, my proper nerd den. No, um, no, no. We need a gallery wall of them and then a gallery wall of quiet so that you have a proper just shrine to your work. Okay. That's how I feel. That's what I want. <laughs> One day I will have these things. And uh, then I'll be and then I, and then I'll be complete. Feel, <laughs> and I can quit. Done. Okay. <laughs> oh, you want to know something funny? I don't know if you can see this in the camera as well, but I even have one of them um on my keychain. No way. No keychain face. That's so funny. Oh my gosh, you've just, all the masks. He's got them all. All the masks, all the masks. Because in, in the game, if you collect them all, there's like a secret you can find. And so for me, then it, 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 then it becomes just like, I well, I got to collect them all. They're mine. I got to make them. I, made, I, gotta, I gotta have them. Got to catch them so. all. 
<laughs> Silliness. Oh, Cody Bear says she was definitely a soft edge artist, by the way. Uh, blend everything and there was no contrast. <laughs> I feel that. Uh, Serial says, I, oh, 1000% hard edge comics shading here. You know that, Jonah. <laughs> I know it. I know it, Serial. I know it. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And it works and you and you make it like you make it your own. I know you're still trying to find your own voice, but you do already have a voice and it's and it speaks speaks quite quite nicely. Absolutely. But that's the thing that yeah, that no matter where you're at in your art journey, you have a voice and the stories mm -hmm. you can tell are just your own. It's exactly how you would tell them. That's right. I think a lot of people like a lot of artists, especially um, or, or, or young artists get preoccupied with finding their voice mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and finding their style. And for me, I'm kind of like, don't even worry about that. Yeah, just, just do art. <laughs> and, and, and trust me, one day you'll be like, oh, I guess I do have a style. I guess that is, that is my style. That's interesting. Right. Well, and, oh, sorry, sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. No, you talk. <laughs> I was well, going to oh, I always get very curious when somebody, when friends of mine or people who follow my work tell me I have a style because I don't like, I'm, I, I'm sure that I do. And I, I, maybe I think I know what it is, but I don't actually really know. I don't really, and I don't know when I got that style or if I've had the style for a long time or just a little time, I don't know. And I think it just comes from, you just make art for a while and you find the things you're good at and you find the things you like to do. And that then one day someone looks at you and goes, I love your style, man. And you're like, what are you talking about? Um, they oh. take the shirt, you know, you like my style. Thank you. I, I took it from somebody else. I don't, you know. <laughs> and that's kind of we how, didn't know how the shirt was an analogy for everything. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. And it's like, and I, and I didn't, um, and it's the same thing with art also is that you'll spend a bunch of years kind of emulating, emulating other people or trying to do what they do and all this stuff. And then one day just being like, I don't think I have a style. And then somebody's, <laughs> and you know, yeah, I just, I just copy off other people. And then somebody tells you, you have a style and you're like, I, what I do. And then, you know, and yeah. but it, oftentimes that style does come from like, you spent time copying from this and copying from that and trying to learn this and trying to learn that. And in the end, it all paid off. Right. Well, and do you ever feel like, well, tell me what my style is, please disseminate. It I do. Me. I ask, <laughs> I ask, and I do. And I'll tell you, a lot of people can't answer. They're like, I don't know. Oh, I yeah. just thought I knew you did it. And I was like, but how did you know I did it? Like, what do I, what am I doing? Um, yeah, not usually able to answer questions. I think that my, if I already guess what my style is, I think it's, I, um, I like, I like dramatic lighting. Mm -hmm. Um, I put a lot of drama into lighting. I put a lot of drama into the characters and their personalities. And then I like to balance, um, their, um, I like to add a lot of detail as well. And I kind of like, I kind of, everything I do kind of has like a, a realistic, but like kind of like, a, a, but a very fantastical sense as well in the lighting and in the in the proportions and all that stuff i don't know i guess my best guess i don't i don't know well but. i'd also be curious if you know your art director from all the video games you worked on saw your quiet series like what they would say because they're you know familiar with your work mm -hmm. or co-workers or whoever you know just somebody familiar with all of your video game work that's very highly detailed and then they see quiet and they're like oh this is a new side Ooh. Yeah, I, that would be really cool. If that's if that's how people felt. I I I I think I think it'd be really fun to like to kind of have people who knew my style in certain ways, like kind of contrast and compare. Yes, Very exactly. By the way, Jake Green says, "I didn't know you designed those. So amazing about the masks." And Samuel says, "I spent too many hours collecting those masks in Skyrim. Thanks for that, Jonah." <laughs> my pleasure. Um, you personally hid them, I'm sure, or put them by. Yeah, yeah, so. I did. You know, it's funny because that that uh, it was a quest in a video game. People often wonder, you know, how things get put together, and you know, and, and what's the thought process behind things. Um, and um, for that particular one, it was kind of much more. Um, uh, it, it was my friend basically uh, quietly wanted to put them in the game and kind of just have like this little like fetch quest thing in the game. And he basically asked me, would, would I be interested? And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds good. And so I looked at uh, African masks, actually. I have a mask from Nigeria um, that I just loved. And, um, and so I use that as an inspiration to create these, these masks in the game. 
Beautiful. And it ended up being, oh, I see the problem. This is it, I'm not 100%. Um, and then it ended up just being this like really big, successful thing in the game. And so it almost, it almost, it was never on any formal documents to get made. It just kind of got made by a friend of mine and got put into the game. And so it was really cool. That was that, probably one of the cool, I think that's another reason I collect them is because it's one of the cooler experiences I've had in my career where my friend and I kind of invented a thing for this game and it became like really big. And that was a really cool experience. Absolutely. And I love uh, bringing in the different influences as well. Like mm -hmm. you're saying, uh, oh gosh, what was the name of the spider story that we bonded over yesterday? Anansi. <laughs> Anansi. Mm -hmm. I have to remember that because I, I need to go back and find those tapes that my mom had. Um, these are African stories and Anansi the spider is apparently one of them. And you use that as inspo for the the spider character that uh, we saw in your other piece. Mm -hmm. And um, where was I going with that? Spiders. Oh, using the, <laughs> the African influence for the masks as well. That is just such a, a wonderful thing to see that you're like reaching out and seeing what the world has to offer in terms of inspiration and thank you. not just I, going with like first thing <laughs> that well yeah thank you i appreciate that i mean i i'm a huge believer in you know we you asked me at the beginning of today like what i call myself and i call myself like, among other things a concept artist um mm -hmm. oops um and i think concept art you know your whole the whole purpose of concept art is to um come up with 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 ideas and things no one's ever seen before um, and come up with them on the fly, and um, and kind of and kind of keep it, keep adding to the equation. And so I feel like a lot of fantasy has to date kind of been dominated by kind of Western um, culture, medieval culture. You know, mm -hmm. um, you look at Lord of the Rings and that kind of thing, and it kind of just you know a lot of it is kind of very same same. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, deriving inspiration, you know, the, the world is just full of amazing mm -hmm. art. An amazing culture and there's like all these different cultures that people and, and resources that people don't use uh, and never never look to you know until for instance until um um you know afrofuturism was kind of this kind of like small uh little little known genre niche genre until uh a little movie came out called black panther and then suddenly <laughs> it was like it's 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 everywhere you look now because it's like and i think that really speaks to the value of it because people are dying for new things and dying for oh yeah new, you know references and so i i always try to take inspiration from the world around me i think i i, I literally think it's actually my job to do that mm -hmm. uh, and i literally believe that if i don't do that i am uh doing a bad job of being a fantasy creator because i think that um, as fantasy creators, it's it's our job to in, to create things, and 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 create new ideas for people, and and make their worlds richer, and 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 make their worlds like more interesting, by adding actually original content, not derivative content. Mm. And so um, I think it's really so. And the world itself is just so teeming with interesting, different things um, that I you know I really I kind of feel in my heart like i owe it to, to people who follow me and who are interested in me to always make sure that i'm creating the most quality fan fantasy that i can mm -hmm. and that involves and digging deep into the world around me for sure i can say you're doing a great job and also the thing that we were talking about yesterday was definitely that being passionate and curious about things in the world and that's exactly what you're doing it's your job to just basically imbue it into what you're showing the world or you're you know following <laughs> is saying like hey i found a cool thing you like <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and you look at a lot of there's a lot of things in fantasy and in all that that like are are just taken from the real world almost you know um oh, for sure and and people don't know because people don't even you know they, they don't necessarily explore the real world to the extent that you know that they would see these things but but the world is is, is so vast you know and there's so much amazing stuff I, I posted some pictures on my instagram yesterday of some drawings i'd done of armor mostly um uh, armor from like china and things like that and some of my followers were basically they were like cool have you ever heard of this armor have you ever seen this armor have you ever and i was like thank you thank you thank you and i was just taking yes. it all and i was like <laughs> so exciting like um you know because because it just it's all food 
for the imagination and, mm -hmm. and it's all, and there's so much to learn, you know, about the world, um, about the world that we live in now. Um, and so I always look at it through the fantasy lens, you know, about, about basically seeing what, what the world has to offer and then trying to figure out, you know, how, how do I, how do I put that in some new shape or form into my art and into my world? And so I really, I love, I love and feel so privileged that I get to create fantasy for a living because it, it gives me this really powerful excuse to just like dive into the real world and it just indulge in anything it has to offer because it just, I, I always feel like, great, I will just learn new things that I can teach people and that I can put into my art and all that. And I'm richer because of it. So it's, it's a nice, it's a nice concrete reason to right. be passionate and, and, and interested and engaged. If you're doing some other job, you might not be able to look at armor all day. Like how sad. <laughs> how sad. I know. I really, I, sometimes I think to myself, I, I feel I like it. I was so lucky that I get to do this for a living. Like, I can't believe it. My wife says it too. She's a, she's a civil rights lawyer, which is oh, wow. a wonderful and important job. And she's so smart and so amazing in, in all these different ways. And sometimes I'll just be like, oh, here's what I'm doing for my art. You know, like, what do you think? And she'll just be like, I cannot believe you do this for a living. This is so, I want to, she's like, she's like, I want to do this for a living. How come you get to do this for a living? Yeah. I love that. Bring her in. Make her one of us. She's yes. wonderful. She actually used to do, she actually used to be um, much more into art. Um, but she's really, but she's actually, she really, she really loves what she does actually. And she's excellent at it. She's amazing at it. Um, oh, that's so. lovely. And I mean, I think everybody should be making art regardless of what you do for a job. It doesn't totally. need to be a money-making venture, but it is definitely a personal venture and everybody's got something to say. So. Absolutely. Okay. I actually, we had a, um, a, a rough night, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, weeks ago. Um, and what we did in the end, and it was her decision and it was her recommendation is we, um, we just sat down and we drew and she just, we had, I had these colored markers that she bought me for my, for my birthday. And um, I haven't used them nearly as much as I've meant to. Yeah. But she started drawing and it really turned her mood around. I mean, uh -huh. she just like, and it was just a little doodle thing. I don't, you know, I don't even know where it went, but she just, we did it for like an hour in front of the TV and just, it was very like therapeutic. So I agree with you and uh, people should, people should always be, be, be doing something creative, uh, some kind of art form of some kind, because it does, it feeds the soul. Absolutely. And I have to tell my uh, partner, James, this all the time, but even though we're artists, we still need to create art for fun <laughs> like for ourselves yeah. and not for money sometimes because that's what I loved about finding sculpting uh his brother and sister actually came together one Christmas and got us this gigantic box of Sculpey which is a oven baked clay and I was like oh my gosh this is all <laughs> I've ever wanted and started sculpting like crazy and he also sculpts but he always says like I don't want to bake it because he likes making things but not mm -hmm. making them a permanent thing. You know, it's not to mm. like, it's that like, it's funny, but if you put a drawing, like say you're, you know, working on it for hours, when do you bake it? You know, <laughs> like, is it yeah. when you put it up on social media? Is that when it's done? Um, but anyways, it just, it speaks to the, the mental state, I think of the person, whether they want to keep it or not, but also making something in a 3D space is such a different experience mm -hmm. that it makes it feel, um, I'm sure because you modeled, you know this, but like mm -hmm. it makes your brain work a little differently. And I think for physically like doing it, it made me feel like it was a hobby. And I love that so much. <laughs> totally, so, totally. I no, I, I, I really feel like I, I love 3D art and, and computer art, but I'm I'm kind of, I've kind of fallen in love with the, just the act of making physical things because I'm tired of not being able to like hold what I make, you know, afterwards. And, and there's something so wonderful about just the act of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I totally agree. Definitely. By the way, Rob Zilla says, pro tip, illustration is a wonderful prof profession. <laughs> he says, I can attest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Agreed. With I'm with Rob. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed.
Uh, in about 10, 15 minutes, something like that, we're going to go into the artist spotlight, by the way, guys. So uh, we're going to be reviewing one of your guys' uh, Behance pages. And if you guys want to be a part of that in the future, there's a tab right above the chat here on Behance. If you're on YouTube, come over to Behance so we can chat with you. Um, there's a tab right above there where you can nominate yourself or a person that you really just love the artwork of so that in future spotlights, we can highlight their work. Mm. And then uh, we have about a half hour left for this piece of art. Oh, man. <laughs> how like, are you feeling? Like, it's yeah, looking I'm, amazing. How do I feel? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah, that's the most important part because we can all see that it's gorgeous, but I want you to feel everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm excited to the potential here. I'm really excited to the potential. I am, you know... Um, I wish I was farther along than I am now. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You're crazy. Um, but that's just kind of, you know, that's just, that's just the nature of things. But I also, you know, I think I knew, you know, how far I would get or wouldn't get in this dream because um, if, you know, if this is, if this helps people at all, like just to get a sense of like, of the time it takes to do something, you know, this is, I, I even sketched this mostly done um, before, you know, we started yesterday. And, um, you know, so things, if, if you're feeling like, like you're not happy with your, with your speed or you're not getting results fast enough, just remember that like, truly, truly I, I am with you and, and art just requires oftentimes just requires like, well, just a lot of time, just mm. a lot of just, and, and it's, it's patience, you know, it's, it's just patience. You gotta be, gotta just try to relax into it and try to enjoy uh, you know, the pomegranate uh, seed picking and just kind of enjoy ah, the pomegranate seeds. They come back. Remember? Remember? Yeah. Yes. If you didn't catch yesterday's stream, you'll get the pomegranates after you do, <laughs> which I absolutely love. Cause it's so true that like it, it matters so much how, um, patient you are. Yes. But also this is one thing I wanted to, uh, talk about last last conversation um <laughs> when uh we were talking about finding your style and what really makes your style what it is i talked mm. about this with sam peterson on his uh stream i think it was back in october possibly it's in the replays if you guys want to catch it and we were talking about how uh sometimes your style uh how you learn from other artists is different or I should say what you love about other artists and their work isn't always what you love making. So like what your eyes love yeah. looking at isn't always what your hand wants to do. <laughs> and knowing the difference there is a huge journey for me, particularly because I, I used to do a lot more painterly stuff, a lot more detailed stuff. Um, but I decided like, no, my hands are not going to render for 18 hours. I am not going to do that. <laughs> Uh, and it's a decision that I think everybody has to come to on their own, whether you are saying like, is it worth it or is it not for you is the most fun part when you're spending all that time, putting it into every delicious detail. Cause I know people who can do that and really, really, truly love it. And I would say go for it. Uh, mm -hmm. but I knew that for me, I started dragging at like hour, I don't know, 10. <laughs> yes. So, um, I think it's good to know, like, if you can appreciate the art, that doesn't always mean that it's your favorite art to make. Does that make yeah. sense? <laughs> I totally, I totally agree. I totally agree. In fact, a lot, oftentimes I appreciate artists for what they're doing because specifically I can't do it, you know, or I, I don't want to yeah. do it or whatever. And it, it really, I mean, truly, I, and, and it's kind of one of those things where, you know, the, the longer you become an art, the longer you are an artist and the more you realize like how much you can't do. And then that's right. not necessarily like a, a, a terrible thing, you know? No. Um, and it just kind of makes you appreciate, you know, and this, again, this is part of the reason why I always want people to be making art um, and having fun making art because um, I feel like it's really, there's, you know, no telling, you, you know, you, you might not be able to do the things I can and I can't do the things you can, but we both have a lot to say. Oh yeah. And we have a lot of individual talents that maybe yeah, we wouldn't necessarily appreciate. Um, in ourselves but other people it's you know i mean i don't know it's it's we all have something to offer you know absolutely um, yeah there's no good or bad in that it's it's all just uh 
it's just telling your own story and how you choose to tell it. And that's a continual journey. It keeps going for so, I mean, our entire careers, our entire lives, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's, and that's exciting. I feel, I honestly feel like I'm really, I really like that idea that, that like I have years and years to go because it makes me think of, you know, when I'm old when I'm 80 years old, if I think about being 80 years old right now, I don't think to myself like, woof, ah, oh, man, I bet, I bet I have lots of issues walking, you know, like all that stuff. Like, <laughs> that's because that's going to be the case. It's just like, that's just getting old. What I really legitimately think about is, oh, I bet I'm much better at like X, Y, Z at that point. You know, mm -hmm. I just think about all the years and years of like training that I can be like, oh, I'll be like, I'll just want to make art all the time because I'll be spending so much time making art. I'll be like super Absolutely. into it. Yeah. That's what James always says. He's like, we're, we only get more valuable, <laughs> which is I wonderful. I love that. Yeah. I got to say, you're James, James is on. Oh. on something. James is the best. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. uh, by the way, Cody Bear says, I love doing floral design as my tactile real world artwork outside of digital. I went to floral design school with the intention of becoming a florist, but now it's just a great hobby, which is kind of amazing that you thought like this will be my career and you flipped it where it's like now drawing is the career florist is hobby, <laughs> which is really cool. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's why I, I didn't, I, I must've known that about you, Cody, but that's really cool. I had no idea. And it shows in your work, like all the charming botanical kind of motifs to a lot of your stuff, but also I would never assume that of anyone <laughs> like, oh yes, you have a floral background, but that's just <laughs> so cool. I don't I, There's something about it that just makes me feel like, yeah, that fits with Cody. It's a charm. <laughs> and Absolutely. I can imagine you in a, a florist like shop. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Samuel says, are the eyes of the Hydra internally luminescent or are they reflecting the torchlight? If so, they have a hint. Uh, if so, should they have a hint of orange, which you just turned them orange? Boom, mm -hmm. did it. Um, I don't know. You know. That's a really good question. I haven't yet decided um, if that's the case or not. Right. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm actually, I'm still trying to like balance out kind of like what my next step is, et cetera. Like, so for instance, um, I, I'm kind of thinking like, okay, do I want like little scaly do i want to go in there and start kind of making like scaly um you know shininess on there is it is it too early for that um <laughs> too to early out, like, like there's timing for it okay you got to time it just right <laughs> well oftentimes these little like shiny little bits um yeah. they kind of like they're really good kind of at the end um because mm -hmm. they really are the light shining on the surface of a thing you know yeah um, the last 10 percent, first 10 percent people look like at <laughs> exactly exactly and so i feel like i want to make sure that i'm doing it kind of at the right time and in the right way and so i'm spending a lot of time today trying to think about like what things would look like um and, and how to structure them and i think probably 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 use a little bit too much time but um but i can definitely so so i have this gradient map here and and that's kind of going over everything yeah. so now i'm kind of just starting to throw in a couple layers on top of just color layers Mm -hmm. um it's like this 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 torchlight layer that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and i'm also thinking i should have like a gradient map kind of over maybe two gradient maps and one of them under quiet and one of them confined by the quiet mask and this one maybe i can adjust so maybe i can go um make this a little bit more kind of pale blue or pale white is that showing up at all i can't tell um I can't, I can't tell at all. I can't tell either. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Um, is this color or is this, um, yes, it's color. Let's make it a normal layer. Oh, gotcha. Just to see what happens, just to see how things look, how things move around. Okay. Um, okay. And then this is be yellow and there'll be a white here. Yeah, if you guys haven't off. used, gradient maps this is just fascinating to see so take note <laughs> of all these different yeah you can like basically control what color goes to what value and uh how how fast that shift is within the gradient another magic tool uh, it's a great tool it's a great mm -hmm. tool it's wonderful all right so i think i'm starting to identify some things i'm, get, I'm getting wrong here so i think i need to wherever it turns orange it needs whoa it needs to be um, <laughs> a bit more saturated and maybe a bit lighter as well. Ooh, and, so you get that hot edge. So you get the hot edge, exactly. Yeah. And then I can pull up the, I can push the white a little closer in. 
to really start getting that kind of yeah and that's and that's that's we're getting there we're getting there um yeah yeah uh we have a question by the way if you're I don't know. Are you okay to take a question? I know this is intense <laughs> time <Yeah>. to like. <laughs> no, no, I'm stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just trying to figure out like technical things about gradients and stuff. You never yeah, know. Please. Uh, yeah, please. Nazmul says, um, or Nazmul, sorry. Uh, when it comes to designing silhouettes for characters, does the silhouette need to be in perspective? Also, when beginning the line art over the silhouette, is it okay to use reference? Um. Always okay to use reference. Always okay to use reference, absolutely. Um, and is it important for it to be in perspective? Um, no, it is not. Um, no, I would say it's, it's not It's not an important thing. It's always good to know how things lay out, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, how, things, and how things look from different perspectives. But no, I wouldn't say that um, it was a necessary thing to, um, to learn or, or to, to kind of get that into that, that part of, the process, but right, right, right. But just being aware that you will have to, um, uh, you will have to ultimately draw it in perspective. You know, that's kind of an important, important thing to re just remember. For it's sure, true. yeah. Just like it, have the skills to back it up, but not necessarily. It's kind of like uh, knowing how to draw a house so that you can draw it wonky, <laughs> like knowing mm -hmm. the rules so you can break them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. exactly. That's exactly right. Because you can, you can, you can, whoopsie, that's a weird brush. Ooh, I kind of like it. I don't like that brush. <laughs> that's not the brush I, I want. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I also want to like, I, I just need to like light this a bit more realistically. I think I'm doing, um, well, actually, that's it. You know what's what? Okay. All right. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm doing. Sorry, guys. I'm doing like a lot so of many like, thoughts. Control. Yeah, totally. I feel the same. <laughs> I do that all the time. Um, but just know that this looks awesome. So if you're Thank questioning you. anything, like, don't, <laughs> don't worry. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. I'm. You know, it's 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 like I'm not. I'm not too worried. Like, does it look like good? It's but just. I'm, doesn't but I, but I'm like I'm like I'm much more focused on like how do I make it look better going forward? You know, and how do I right. how do I What's approach it in the, in the smartest way? Because I'm looking at like for instance the lighting here. Um, and I want the, the the light of the torch to kind of catch on these characters mm -hmm. um, in a consistent way. And I want it to like look, you know, good. And so, yeah, that'll be something I continue to wrestle with. Right. And you know what it's kind of perfect time for is the artist spotlight. If you would like to do that. Let's uh, do it. <laughs> Let's do you it. have no choice. No, uh, we're going to spotlight an artist today. Uh, I can't wait to do this one because uh, it is someone near and dear to our hearts. So the artist spotlight is basically a feature where we take somebody's profile on Behance and we just get to show you guys and hope that you follow along in our journey of following the artist because this artist is absolutely deserving of your follow. Uh, so we are highlighting Sam Peterson today, our very own. Ooh. Woo! <laughs> uh, we absolutely Excellent. love Sam Peterson's art. It's let's, absolutely let's pull it gorgeous. Up. Yeah, we got it. Okay, so we've got multiple different uh, projects here. One of them, of course, is the Behance streaming schedule that he made, which he does regularly stream on Behance here. So if you want to give him a follow, you'll know every time he goes live. Uh, and all right, so do you want to start from most recent or go through and see all of them first? Um, wow, okay, I love Isn't this. Isn't it gorgeous? Let's go to oh, the so good. most recent. Fox I just love, mystery. I mean, I just love, A, I love how much, how much <laughs> Sam's on here. Um, Absolutely, I really know. It's really wonderful, I mean, like, you know, like, I have kind of come and gone in certain ways and kind of gone in different directions. And Sam has just been killing it for years and just been producing such high quality fantasy and, and, gate, and going after it in such a rigorous, disciplined way. I mean, just, you know, really his workflows are great. Um, his character designs are great. And I love his color schemes, the kind of the muted, muted color schemes. And so, yeah, I mean, you could not go I mean, you could not do any better to, than to follow him. For sure. Absolutely. This is the serious character from the Art Station Box of Mystery Challenge. I spent some extra time after the challenge to refine him. He is the historian and scholar of the Guardians of the Second Realm. So this shows 
how much just research and thought goes into every single character he's making. And look at all this exploration. I just love that he goes for all of the, like puts the time into making sure that he loves the design before he goes to like a full on render stage, uh, especially with the costumes. If you've ever seen his process, a lot of times he'll just, he'll make the character underneath and then he'll figure out like, what is this character wearing and do all these studies of it, which is such a cool process to watch, uh, let alone like learn from. It's very in, like intuitive and also juicy in your mind. <laughs> I don't know. There's right. something about it like that makes me happy thinking about following this process. Absolutely. I think it's a really, it's a testament to like how much thought and how much iteration goes into this. I mean, this is so much of, when I, when I get asked about being a, con a concept artist for mm -hmm. the industry, I would, I think from now on, I got to start pointing at Sam stuff because essentially it not only is it good, um, but <clears throat> you know, his talent aside, and he is very talented, but, but his talent aside, the work ethic and the breadth of breadth of work on display, this is exactly what companies want to see is they want right. to see that you can iterate and iterate and create these different versions because often in games in movies and entertainment, et cetera, almost always you're working for a client with a particular vision and you can make something really cool. I do this, this happens to me a lot. I make something really cool mm -hmm. and then the client doesn't like it, you know? Oh yeah. And it's not because they don't think it's good, but because it doesn't fit with what they wanted um, or what they had in mind. And so I think being able to demonstrate a profound flexibility, um, a, a great openness, um, openness of your mind, I think it's really important uh, to, for a, a, an employer to see it shows that you don't become wedded to your own vision too early. You don't exactly. hold your own taste to be, um, uh, you know, of paramount importance and that you're flexible and that you're, you're um, adaptable. Absolutely. And that you can take a simple prompt. This is also really cool on ArtStation's part. Apparently there's a mystery box or box of mystery challenge um, where there are key, uh, keywords like brave character, joyful character, that kind of stuff. Um, and he's taken it and really interpreted it in his own way. I love that this guy feels like a small one and yet he's the brave character. And that's the kind of stuff that I just, I love seeing in storytelling is, uh, either juxtaposition or uh, subverting of expectations in a, a fun way uh, where it's just like, oh yeah, you know what you want? This character. And I'm like, yes, yes, I do want that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and obviously you can see from the breadth of his work, he's just done so much. And I can see like every little thing has different influences. So you can consider like how much work goes into one character and then look at the lineup of amazing characters that he's created. And you're like, Sam, you've been working. <laughs> yeah sam's sam's been working like where you been sam i've been working you know like he's yep. all, he's always doing it i think that um it's really it just demonstrates like kind of just determine i mean they, just look at the beard look how soft it looks you know it like it look <laughs> and that armor look how it shines like it, see it, how i glitter yeah see how i glitter <laughs> it's not it's not easy you know this stuff isn't easy and it's and it doesn't and and more importantly it doesn't it, it you can't do it quickly you know Right. Yeah. This isn't he's just a, I decided to draw a thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like really going after it, you know, he's, and, and he's taking the time it takes to do it. And so, I mean, that to me, honestly, that's one of the most admirable qualities you can find in, um, in an artist. Uh, that's just my, my feeling is I can really, so really love what they do. And some artists out there are just, <clears throat> you know, there are 19 year olds out there who are crushing me at, you know, at, at <laughs> kinds of art. but what I, but what I, and that's, that's like, um, a, that's a special gift. That's a special like obsession. I love that. But when I just see people just making lots of art and constantly and just putting in the time to get it right uh, and giving it their best every time, there's like nothing better for me. Cause I'm just like you, I'm not like worried about you as a professional at all because you are just rigorous you're self-motivated and, and you're patient and you're disciplined. And I think these are really important um, and integral aspects of being like a really powerful artist. I mean, I just love, I sure. love how like these characters here on the edges, they kind of blur in with their environment. And then where they become into importance in the head and the shoulders, et cetera, they kind of get crisper. You know, we were talking about edge flow before. Right. Really brilliant, really great. 
which it goes back to the live stream I had with him where he was talking about trying to find that middle area of being like rendered, being realistic, but like pulling back from that. He really wants to be painterly. He wants to be stylized and he, he's just nailing it. He's doing so well. And I just, I love watching him create on stream as well, because he is one of those rare creators where you just like see uh, a through line of what he says, what he makes, and it's all in front of people. And I'm like, how? Because <laughs> I know uh, Jonah, you stream as well. So I'm sure you feel it, but it's like, sometimes you feel like you had a good stream. Sometimes you feel like you had a eh stream. And I feel mm -hmm. like he consistently creates stuff like work that he wants to show as a portfolio piece on stream. And I'm like, how? Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. I can't, I love, and I love these colors. I love like the rough, oh, yeah. the roughness of them. Like it's very, the neutral tones of the yeah, classic painters, really, I feel. I really, I actually quite, I, I, I honestly, I quite envy him. Um, this ability to like use such neutral tones and use them so, so well, you know. Um, so Sam, you've got the envy of Jonah. Boom. <laughs> he knew it. He knew it. He knew it already. So everybody give Sam a follow. He definitely deserves it. And also just make sure you're ready for all the streams because he's coming at us all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he streamed like yesterday. So you can also catch up on old ones. Uh, if you just go to the video tab of anyone on Behance's page where they uh, stream, then you can see the content he's making. Look at this guy. He's got such gesture to it. Oh, I love it. So thank you so much for being our highlighted artist, Sam. Thank you for making amazing work that we can look at. <laughs> absolutely beautiful um also the stream schedule he's got right now is monday 4 30 to 6 30 wednesday 4 30 6 30 and friday 4 30 to 6 30 i believe so if you're available at those times please do awesome let's get back to your work let's do it oh and everybody in the chat is just like yeah sam woo sam yeah <laughs> people know people know his, his, his legend has, has spread far and wide Oh, they are in the know for sure. Mm -hmm. He is one of the pieces of lore here on Behance. <laughs> <laughs> He's, oh, I like that. He's his own piece of lore. Absolutely. They say if you stay up every day at eight, he comes <laughs> and, and, and he makes art. Sometimes you can see him in the chat, just a, a faint hint of Sam Peterson. <laughs> I love, by the way, that Sam shows up for other artists as well. Like Absolutely. Just like, Shows up, comes in, says, so I, I don't do that enough. And it's because I just, I, if I'm not on Twitch or, or, or Behance, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just doing something else. And I just always, I'm like, I'm so touched whenever he shows up. I'm like, dude, you made it. That's so awesome that you just like, you didn't have to come here and you just came here because you want to say what's up and support me. I love it. Yeah, that is a wonderful surprise whenever it happens with other streamers. I totally agree. Where you're just like, I should do that all the time. I should spend all day on Behance because mm -hmm. there's so many great streamers here. And of course, Adobe Live is just a constant stream of entertainment and knowledge. I love it. Uh, but yeah, we will both have to remind each other to do that. Show mm -hmm. up for Sam. Do it for Sam. Do it for Sam. <laughs> I love it. All right, I'm trying to figure out here what I'm going to do about. So I think I need to um, think about my, um, yeah, about painting maybe on top of things a little bit. So I have these kind of this torch light here. I create another layer here where I actually want. Um, I actually instead of blue here, I, I'm actually thinking I want like kind of a, a green, that is, but that is kind of like like the like the like the it's like the the glow is is kind of picking up in the water. You know what I mean? Mm, totally. Um, I also don't want it to go over him. So I got to figure out how I'm going to do that. Um, right. I don't know all the layers. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah. I think I, what I might do is I might, I might um, take these, take these layers and collapse them down um, and start painting on top of them. Like, so we just kind of commit the colors that are there. Um, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, yeah. And then probably like also, and I, at this point, actually, I'm kind of just painting on top and just being loose, loosey goosey. This um, is what I always end up doing. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm tired of layers, one over top of everything. <laughs> that's, yeah, yesterday we were saying this. I was basically saying, yeah. like, I don't, I, I like to just get rid of them. Just get rid of the layers. I don't want them around. Mm -hmm. um, they get in the way. Um, but I also want, like, just to, just to remind myself so I don't forget, I want, um, so I want uh, reflections of himself mm -hmm. in the water. And that'll probably be 
you know, different values, et cetera. This is, here's his shiny end. He's the That's shiny so end of himself. Here's his arm. <laughs> Wait, you've actually, got the I dull even, end and the shiny end? I can even flip it like this. Um, flip turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute. Just sit right there. Oh, you <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> Reference. What, what? <laughs> wow, so quickly you just implied that that uh reflection and it already reads that's amazing oh, good good yeah i mean I'm, so i i think i think in designing like um reflections you always got to respect like the kind of the verticals you know to so make sure that i mean right now we're, it, the whole scene's kind of from an angle mm -hmm. um but but basically having um making sure that all these things are kind of uh, happening kind of in a line you know like you know here right yeah um and so in this case, yeah, I went and I'll, he'll have like, you know, some of that reflection um, off the, the sword as well. Um, that kind of thing could be really cool. And then, and then ultimately I'll be kind of going in and, you know, I can erase it basically in kind of like these circles around him. Um, and cause, you know, cause the, uh, ultimately there will be like a warbling effect mm -hmm. um, in there, but uh, yeah, that's a good start anyway. Lindsay says, I love the little stripe of orange glow on his noggin. Noggin coming back. <laughs> noggin. Yeah, I think I'd like to, to continue to work on that and make it more, um, um, yeah, exactly, incorporate it a bit more. I think there's a lot of work mm -hmm. to be done there. I think this guy's a little bit a too lot. great. Um, sorry, what did you say? I said, quote, a lot. I feel like it's so far or like it, it to me I, i'm done but like you know <laughs> no, I know like, you. oh no so i know much you work you're, to be done. you're definitely not done you would definitely oh, i'm be done, done. <laughs> <laughs> i through you am complete <laughs> um, i'm glad you feel that way yes uh, I love it though. You know, I was thinking about the eyes. Uh, the This is maybe getting a little too deep, but no, the brilliant. eyes of him, it's like all dark inside. He sees what is in front of him and he sees only darkness. And then they look at him and they see the light, Ooh. <gasps> the contrast. Ooh. And then it's reflected in their eyes. I love that. I mean, I like, I mean, I like that also because it's like, this is, this was a composition. Remember that we started because I had this sketch. In yeah. My eyes. Um, and actually, it's funny because you look at the sketch and look at this, and, and there's a lot of similarities, and yet there's a lot of strengths that this is bringing, with the, the punch of it, like the kind of the power and the and the contrast mm -hmm. that actually this is lacking. Oh, you think um, so? And so, yeah, I think so. I think I think, um, I mean, listen, this is a this is a black and white image, mm -hmm. and so it's very it, it makes the case very strongly. But there's something I did, for instance, here that I'd like to point out that I or that something I did here that I didn't do here, and I'm not sure yet if it's a good call or not. Mm -hmm. And that is um, the background uh, in this image gets darker around him. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Lighter as, kind of lighter as it goes out. And then it kind of gets darker again at, at the edge. Um, but the purpose of that is because he's the bright spot. Right. That I wanted the darkness to be dark, darkest around him. So if I'm just experimenting with that right now, just to just to see. Because um, this, this, cause this matters insofar as like, um, contrast matters, you know, and you can and you can really draw attention to a thing by higher contrast. And now he's he's white in this in this image we did up here. He's mm -hmm. very pale. So if I go in here and I darken out behind him, I mean, you'll oh, yeah. notice that there is actually pop, pop. like he does actually pop there. Yeah, totally. Um, and so that might be a reason to do kind of go in the opposite direction that I've been going in, um, and then kind of make it a bit more neutral as we work our way out. Um, so and pretty. that has the added kind of benefit. I may have gone a little bit too far there, um, but that has the added benefit of basically um, as we go out in the composition, kind of blurring, um, blurring them a little bit more with their environment and then having right. them gain visual interest as they kind of come in. Um, so I'll get rid of that patch of green there just so you can see. So it's an idea. It's I love idea. that idea. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, immediately it looks so cool. <laughs> like it just pops. Oh, and well, that so reflection too, like having a crisp reflection, there's something about it that makes it feel like that is still water, which is mm. really creepy <laughs> when you think of all the, the motion of these creatures. Uh, and it just looks like he's so alone and it's so stark. Yeah, that's true. Isn't that, isn't it funny that like, 
we were like, no, it's good this way. And then I did it this way. And we were like, no, never mind. This is better. <laughs> I take it back. I take it all back. <laughs> this, is, this is digital art, you guys. This is the conundrum of digital art. Um, Absolutely. Because I do. Actually, I prefer this. I prefer this. I think you're right. I, I think it's a, it's a better look. It's so, so cool. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, digital art, for presenting us with the this option to just... The infinite control, you know, sometimes yeah, it's to good. Yeah, mush around. <laughs> yeah, and it also just gives more, as as they come into the light, they're, right. they're popping more. Gosh, that's crazy how much more I like it now. Hey, and how perfect the timing. We've got about two minutes left, so <gasps> you just <laughs> made okay, yourself quickly. happy. Yay! Uh, I, where's, the, where's the make finished button? Where's the, like... Oh, yeah, done. <laughs> the last 5% button, like, click that. Um... I'm just rotating um, right to left right now because uh, oftentimes we kind of draw in ways that kind of are somewhat lopsided. We don't realize they're lopsided, but then they are. Um, so I'm just, I just took the time to um, uh, swap, swap it uh, right to left. Yeah, uh, that was, kinda... um, I think they're uh, in the chat yesterday, Shauna was talking about old school Adobe and they used to have a saying in the chat. I think it was sip it, flip it and save because sip water got to remember flip the canvas so Always. important <laughs> to do regularly and then uh save your work um great yes yes <laughs> yes you know what bam save let's do it boom and samuel says changing the background like that made the whole image appear to come into focus Ooh, isn't that yeah isn't that crazy i mean it really it just goes to show like that you and i who are quote unquote professional illustrators we're like happily going along with this and we're like, no, it's good. You know, things are good. Quote and then we do this and we're like, never mind. It's so much better. Nope, nope, nope. Um, <laughs> That's why it's so good to get input from other people. I know you did that on your own. So great job. But also, um, like when I used to work in a studio, it was so important to get other people's eyeballs on it. Mm, absolutely. Oh my goodness. I, I definitely feel that way about, about my own art. And I, I really feel like you know, I'm really proud of the work I did at Bethesda, um, at, you know, working on these video games, et cetera, but nothing I did wasn't made better by having a friend look at it, you know? For sure. Um, um, we're going to say goodbye now, uh, but yeah. Jonah, I know, I know you did amazing work. It looks awesome. Everybody agrees. It's just crap. Claps for Jonah. Wee! <laughs> but also um thank you for being here for two days if you guys didn't catch it yesterday we also live stream so see that in the replays up next we've got the illustrator dcc uh jonah would you like to say anything to the folks at home before we leave um well thanks for hanging out with us today this has been a real pleasure um <laughs> i've been really you know and uh, thanks to anna for um oh, thanks for you, an jonah. amazing host and amazing and i wish we could turn this into like a full-time <laughs> show it sounds so fun it's and then crazy. sometimes you could do the art and i could i could do the talking it sounds well we stream jonah we can be on each other's streams <laughs> do it. all right um, have but, a great day yeah. have thanks a everybody good one so thank you for joining us bye